<laughs> Alright, so we'll just start from the beginning. Okay, see if I can... so this was, this was the second game, right? This is, uh, yeah, well, the fir very first one um, we'll ignore because I lost it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no the okay, first game right. the first game was pretty cool. I mean, I guess we could, yeah, I guess let's, okay, so bishop a6 attacking the pawn on c4. So uh, you kind of defend with a queen. And now I'm pulling the bishop back over to b7, which seems like a waste of time because queen c2 would seem like a... Um, a useful move to play, but at the same time it kind of loosens up the pressure. So after I play, after I play, yeah, I, I have to make a decision here. Um, let me let me play this okay, real quick. Yeah. So d5 is actually they I played in my recent game in uh, so knight takes d5. So you played with black or what? I played with black in um. Okay. I played a tournament in the UK. So yes. my opponent went ahead and castle. So here, I think you gotta play knight to c6 is what you gotta do. Queen c8. You see, uh, in my game, I played against uh, Gormali, and uh, well, actually, I thought he could play rook d1. He played a3. Let me see if I can remember this. I played, I believe, I played knight to f6. Then he played knight. So c3 and I played d5 I believe. Mm -hmm. At which point you played rook d1. Okay, so now if I play d4, then I guess he could take take on d4 with the idea if you take on g2, then you got the you got this threat yeah. right here. Right. So. So now, here's here's how the game happened. Castle, rook to d1, and d5 here. So this was a little overconfident on my part. Uh, he, we ended up playing, he played bishop g5. I played knight d7. Let's see, I guess he, and then I think he played this move here. Yeah. So and after g6, I think he played this move here. And I just played this, and I think we kind of traded things off, and you know just got to this position. Bishop f6, knight d5, bishop d5, and you know got to this situation, but. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of I'm kind of taking over this. Interesting. Um, That's okay. Yeah. So here in this position, guess what the best move for White was? Best move for White here. Yeah. Instead of Bishop G5. Um. Um. What do you think? Like the first thing that comes to mind would be, yeah, I mean, I want to put more pressure on d5, so I would like to move the knight on f3 to somewhere. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know where I want to move it, maybe it's four is one possibility. You e1, got one, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about uh, e5 or uh, or uh. Yeah, but if you said, if you asked me like, uh, you asked me like, guess what the best move is, so I guess that's something uh, interesting. So maybe like, uh, he went bishop g5, right? So maybe, maybe something like knight g5? Yeah, knight g5, but I mean, it's, it's a very similar idea. Just to kind of put pressure. You should be able to get, so g6, maybe play knight e4 here. Um, try to get the pawn this way. But then How I do could I get rid of these uh, these arrows. Okay. Yeah, you just press on it again. So it's not working for some reason. Yeah, oh, it doesn't matter. So knight takes e4. Bishop takes e4. 
Yeah, I guess you could play it this way. But the the, the thing with this, I can also play ninety seven. It's it's very similar, very similar to what happened in the game. So, yeah. but okay, here's a very interesting idea. This was a, a big opportunity for my opponent, and he should have played e four. E four here, okay. And this was a also, it was a also big. It to me, but I, I felt like it doesn't look too less logical to um close the uh, diagonal for the g two bishop. Yeah, well, but the thing is, if you get that d5 pawn, then you can try to push it over to d6. And yeah, then... but what happens after uh, simply... Uh, okay, so d4, you have some e5 idea, I guess. So e4 yeah. was really strong. Yeah, but... so if, if black goes d4 now, then e5 is coming, yeah? If d4, then yeah, then e5 is coming. Yeah, okay, so... Yeah, so, so if knight now... d5, what would you do? But I would consider um, taking. No wait, wait. Yeah, I would consider taking on d4. It looks tempting. Uh, yeah. Let's say knight is d4. I believe rook d4 now. Maybe maybe knight d5. But oh, knight d5 first. Yeah. So yeah, rook d4 here. I mean, no, the here well, white is crushing. You can, like, for example, take on d4, pick up the, yeah. the bishop on b7. So let's do it this way, and this way, right. and this way, and this way. Okay, so yeah, this also, is very, uh, very strong, it seems. Yeah, no, this, this, was, this was a killer e4. And really, uh, the best thing I can do is just really kind of like hold off with, like, play knight d7. Got e5. Yeah, but okay, but then, then you are always slightly worse at least. No, this, no, I mean, this position like this is just like, I mean, kind of like looks like close to losing. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's going to be some kind of a shot combined with a king side, a king side attack. So. Right. But yeah, e4. And I mean the 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 knight d4 move is just not not so easy to see. So knight d5 and knight takes d4. This kind of came to me as a surprise too. Right. All right, cool. So yeah, so that was the idea. But uh, well, that's enough of that. So yeah, definitely, man. I I feel like I feel like you gotta go for it. You gotta sack that pawn. And uh, uh, you better be prepared, yeah. you know. That that's yeah, good that's too. More critical, but uh, yeah, I mean, in a blitz game, you just uh, go for something, you know. And you definitely know. I say play d5, sack that pawn. I think it's much better, uh, yeah. much better deal for it. Okay, so castle. castle. C takes d, and this is just straight up equal right away. Right. And uh, no, no problems really. I don't know if I should play queen c7. Maybe I should play queen c8. Yeah, to avoid some, uh, yeah, both. I can go bishop f4 in some cases, and also some, maybe some knight d5 ideas. In some of knight d5, yeah. You're gonna play queen d7 check, anyways. But yeah, look, okay. your your king is on g2, so I have those, I have those ideas, hitting up the, the diagonal. So it kind of takes away, um, it takes away time. From you know, like if you play e4, maybe I could pin it. Plus, what I played, I mean, the the idea of queen c7 is so that you don't get the knight out to c3. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it looks it looks logical. So. Yeah, queen c7. You played b3. I played a6. Looks like I should I should but maybe I should make this check first. What would you play? I mean, probably move the king, right? Um, yeah, I could also consider f3. F3, yeah, but I don't know if that's gonna be all too valuable for you. Okay, let's try, let's try, let's try f3, right? So, knight c6. And, uh, this should be 2, I guess. This should be 2, yeah. And then here I could probably just trade, trade a piece. 
I could offer a second trade with bishop c5, but I could probably just play solid. Bishop b7, let's say knight c3, castle. e4, and maybe rook c8. Um, maybe e5 here. Do you want to start at d6 maybe? Computer likes likes why? I mean, I got yeah. I can also start with d6. Yeah, maybe d6 first. Yeah, the computer. Okay, maybe the computer prepares why. I don't know if it means too much, but uh, I have more space. But uh, no, it looks. Looks kind of equal. I prefer white. Yeah. Okay. So queen c7, b3. I played uh, a6. That might be a little slow, but it does give me an idea of b5 as well. So that's good. Okay. okay so knight c3. Can I do this one? Nope. This one. Green. Yeah. Okay. So so let's keep on going. Knight c3, knight c6, yes, knight of three. have to go back. By the way, I like this. I like this knight of three idea you played because huh. a lot of players get confused in this kind of situations. Uh, right. White has a little bit more space, so I feel like you should be keeping the pieces on the board. And that knight on that knight on f3, it uh, it was actually very useful. And later with that. Mm -hmm. I think you you, right. you tried you try getting some kind of an attack going on the king side. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Also, it might help when I'm playing this back four. I don't know. Exactly. exactly. Uh, if you have a knight on three. Plus, so, uh, you're kind of setting up. The thing is, my knight on c six is not so good. So. Uh -huh. so it's kind of interesting how I got like a better position in this game because. It seems like I didn't play very challenging, you know, with just l letting you take on g2, and uh, but then uh, somehow I got uh, a more comfortable position. You you played the uh, uh, you played like Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know about that. But, uh, <laughs> Say you weren't looking for any particular edge. You just played chess. Yeah. I saw. So I, I played rook c8 because I knew that I, I just I just felt like this knight d5 was was coming, and um, you know I, f I felt like I had to um, I had to be proactive about this. So knight d5 blown. Um, so you're trying you're trying to use that idea, you know, as you played rook d1. So let's say if I play bishop b7, let's see, Jun. Bishop e7, rook d1. Now, let's say castle. Okay, I, I know what happened. Maybe maybe you should have made a check on b7 earlier. Uh, then I would have to make a decision if I would want to play knight f3 or move my king or play f3. But then, maybe playing knight c6. Yeah, queen b7, but f3 is actually a good idea because it helps you push for e4. Okay, and okay, but at least you can uh, exchange the knight on d4 now. Knight c6. Uh, but you know, once you set up the center, it's it's not, it's not. Uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's the advantage of playing queen b7. But okay. Yeah. So, I'm just wondering because I mean, it seems like I got a more pleasant position, but I. Didn't make any spectacular moves or uh, no, a nicer no. It's it's okay. Uh, that's just your typical um, hedgehog kind of kind of stuff. Yeah, right. Okay, so rook c8, rook c8. and bishop attacks, d6. So yeah, looks looks pretty logical. Rook d1. So look, uh, yeah, I think uh, it might be a point with just placing this rook here and getting. The other rook over to to d1. Yeah. So I think that's a better um, deal yeah, for now you. Not, yeah, now I have some pressure on the b6 pawn, and you can never go e5 because of bishop c5 and uh, get too much control of the d5 square. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you should have uh, you should have uh, rook a d1. I mean, it seems practical because. 
Because you just want to double the rooks on D, right? 